Okay, in this video I'm going to talk about an example of using the central limit theorem on an average. And this example is not going to be the same, but it's going to be similar to example 3.4.6 in the text where you had a researcher um, that was studying, the, I think it was the heights of a couple of different groups. And the reason I want to keep including examples like this is they're very important and they're going to play an important role in our statistics portion of the course. So I'm going to use IQ testing in this example. And it's well known and the scores are scaled this way so that IQ tests are approximately normally distributed with a mean of 15, or excuse me, a mean of 100 and a standard standard deviation of 15. Suppose that 60 Hispanic students are chosen at random to take an IQ test. What is the probability that the average score is less than 95? Okay. We're going to go through this calculation, and then I'm going to talk about why this kind of calculation is important. Okay, so let me get my pen pad. And what color do you want to use today? Well, unfortunately, you can't tell me. You're not here right now, so I'm just going to have to choose for myself. Let's see, I forgot to change away from the text box. Uh, let's use this very light purple kind of color here. Okay, so we have 60 students, and my random variable, x sub i, is going to be the score of the ith student. on the IQ test. Okay. And what I'm concerned about is the average score. So that'd be x1 plus x2 plus all the way up to x60 divided by 60. And we know from the central limit theorem that so long as these scores are um, independent and identically distributed, then this is going to be approximately normal since 60 is fairly large. And it's going to be normal with, well, we're dealing with an average here, so the mean is going to be the same, and the standard deviation is going to be the standard deviation of the individual score divided by the square root of n. And n is how many, how many of these random variables we're adding together, which in this case was, is 60. And just to give you a little bit of perspective, um, let's see, that standard deviation is about put it into my calculator here. It's about 1.94. So notice while the standard deviation of an individual score is 15, when I average 60 scores together, that really drives down the standard deviation to be a little bit less than 2. Now we want to know the probability that this average is less than 95. Okay. Well, this random variable is normally distributed, so I know how to do that. I go compute the z-score for 95. And we get z sub 95 is 95 minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. Okay, and this gives us, I'm going to scroll down a little bit here, uh, this ends up giving negative 2.58. So I have a normal distribution. The mean is at 100. I'm out at 95, and I'm wanting to know the probability that a random variable is less than that. Well, my z-score is negative 2.58. So remember, what we can do is look on the other side. And if we were to go over here and find a z-score of positive 2.58, that would just be since this is 5 units to the left of the mean, it would be 5 units to the right of the mean, we can find this area. And the way that we find this area, actually I want to do that in a different color. 
I've got all these colors up here at my disposal. Why not use them? We can find this area by finding the area to the left of it and subtracting from 1. So for this value, z is 2.58. Okay, so I'm going to pull up my normal distribution table here. It looks like I already have it from making the previous video. And here's 2.5. I've used this thing enough to know that that's 0.09, so that's 0.08. We have 0.9951. 0.9951. And what 0.9951 is talking about is this entire area. So this peach colored area over here is 1 minus 0.9951, which is 0 0.0049. So this area over here is also 0 0.0049, and that's our probability. Okay, so this probability didn't leave enough room to put equals is, well, I need to approximate that because because the, that area cannot be computed exactly um, in a closed form. It's about 0 0.0049, about 0.005%. So why is that important? Well, that is important if you're trying to gauge the fairness of the IQ test. If you were to actually take 60 Hispanic students and give them the IQ test and they had an average score of 95, well, the probability of that happening is extremely low, assuming this kind of a structure. In reality, if you were to do that, if you were to get an average score of 95, that would indicate that most likely your test is biased towards Hispanics. Okay? So it's a little bit of strange reasoning. We suppose that the test is not biased, and if it's not biased, then the Hispanic scores act like everybody else's scores with a mean of 100 and standard deviation of 15. But we learned the probability of getting such a low score is 0.5%, less than 1%. That really puts the, um, puts the test into question. Okay, so that's it for this video.